Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is on how to get into cybersecurity as a beginner. So this is a question that I get a lot in my comments considering many of you are just getting started in cybersecurity or looking for ways to get your foot in the door and get those first skills to be able to have that foundational knowledge in cybersecurity. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the steps that you can take today to be able to learn those foundational skills to then eventually be able to land your first job in cybersecurity. So one of the first things I would start with is setting up your home Lab. So one of my favorite things about cybersecurity is the fact that a lot of the tools that you use on the job are also open source or have some kind of community edition that you can use for free without needing a professional license to use it. And the most popular distribution of Linux for cybersecurity professionals is Kali Linux, which is awesome for us as cybersecurity professionals because, because you can download Kali completely for free as long as you have your own laptop or desktop to use. Of course, you can use other distributions of Linux depending on what you're experienced with. You want to is is a very popular one. I know that's the one that I previously used in my classes for my various networking, digital forensics, as well as other security courses. But Kali Linux is the preferred version of Linux to use because it comes with a lot of the popular cybersecurity tools that people already use in actual real world scenarios and jobs. So Kali comes with tools like BlueSniff, Metasploit, Nmap, John the Ripper, and a bunch of other tools. There are definitely sources online that don't recommend Kali for beginners, but if you're someone who is just starting out and have never used Linux before, I would recommend starting with Ubuntu just to get your hands a little dirty to understand how to use Linux, maybe using the command line a little bit, and then eventually switch over to Kali Linux if you don't want to start with it. Because if you're eventually going to use Kali Linux anyway, then in my opinion, it's worth it for you to save your storage and your RAM just for one Linux distribution because, because I know not everyone's laptops have unlimited RAM and unlimited hard drive space. So there's lots of different ways to get Linux on your machine. Typically, I use a VM. You can use something like VMware or other open source options like VirtualBox, which is again, completely free. So you can set up your own home lab completely free with VirtualBox and Kali Linux. And that is one of the best ways to just get your hands dirty and learn to use some of these different tools, learn what the popular tools are that cybersecurity professionals are using on the job, as well as being able to get that experience with those tools to be able to talk about in future interviews and jobs that you're applying for. All right, the next step I have for you guys is to complete an online program or a bootcamp. So this is one of the most straightforward ways to learn cybersecurity and to be able to learn the skills that you need with instructors as well as live demos and live classes to be able to more quickly learn the cybersecurity skills and tools that you might need. And I'd like to thank Simply Learn for sponsoring today's video. So the Simply Learn postgraduate program in cybersecurity is one of the best ways to get you from the door to get you caught up with all the newest skills as well as all the latest trends in cybersecurity, especially since the field of cybersecurity is always growing and expanding. It has modules from MIT as well as EC Council. So just to give you an idea of what the course looks like, it typically is a six month course and it has different cohorts starting during different times of the year. It's also an online bootcamp, which is awesome. They have super high ratings on course report as well as switch up. This program also provides you six months free access to the CEH v11 online virtual labs as well as 24 hacking challenges from ec council and the fact that it comes for free with this program is also an awesome perk to have so if you scroll down it also gives you some details about the learning path i love how much they lay out every single section of the course starting with orientation and then design systems for secure applications networks building a hacker mindset, defending against different attacks. And you'll see that this part of the course is designed to be aligned with the CISSP, which is a certification that I'm currently studying for. And then there's also even an elective for a cybersecurity masterclass. And here you can find a list of the different skills that you'll learn that are covered within this course. All these are going to be very important, especially when it comes to hacking concepts, as well as security and risk management, software development security, identity access management. These are going to be very important for you to know going into that job. They also give you some background on the actual professor that is teaching the MIT masterclass course. What's also really interesting is where the program graduates go on to work in the future. So different companies that they worked in, as well as industry trends for job growth opportunities, as well as average salaries to be eligible for this program. We do have a list of qualifications for what candidates should have with a bachelor's degree. You don't have to have a programming background and you also aren't required to have prior work experience. They have admissions counselors that you can talk to if you have any questions about applying to the program. The fee for this cybersecurity certification program is three thousand dollars and if you guys have watched any of my previous videos on cybersecurity programs and boot camps you know that many of the boot camps out there are in the five figure range so ten thousand dollars and above 
and this program is a fraction of that price. They have different financing options, and if you're interested in getting started in the Simply Learn postgraduate program in cybersecurity, the September 2022 cohort is starting. And to find out more information about this course, as well as how to apply for admissions, you can check out the link in my description. Thank you so much to Simply Learn for sponsoring this portion of today's video, and let's get back to the rest of the video. So something else that's really important when you're getting started, when you're getting started in cybersecurity, is figuring out if there is a specific niche that you want to go into. For example, some people get started in cybersecurity and they just know broadly that they want to be in the blue team, maybe they want to be an SOC analyst, many of the more beginner roles in cybersecurity, and then eventually you may find that you want to go into an area like, like malware analysis or digital forensics or network security. And these areas are definitely a bit more niche and will require a different set of skills and learning new tools and and getting your experiences to be able to get those other jobs that you want to go into in security. So it'll be really helpful for you to have an idea of what you want to go into even before you get that first job in cybersecurity because it's going to give you a broad path of what you want to do, of where you should be going in your career. For example, if you're going to cybersecurity, knowing that you want to go into cyber threat intelligence, then you'll be learning very different tools than someone who wants to go into digital forensics because, because these are just very different areas of cybersecurity, even though they're both in the cyber security field. So spend some time doing some research on the areas of cybersecurity that you do want to go into. And if you don't know exactly where to start, maybe just get your hands dirty in your home lab, which hopefully you've set up from the first step and just tinker around with some of the tools that you have at your disposal there. And then using that experience, try to figure out which tools you find most interesting to use. For example, tools like Maltigo or Shodan, then maybe that's a sign that you're more interested in cyber threat intelligence than something like digital forensics or malware analysis. So kind of just get your hands dirty with a bunch of different areas in cybersecurity and then figure out which one is calling for you more to then be able to figure out, okay, so I'm more interested in this over this and then you can cross things off your list as you go and that'll make it a lot easier for you to understand, hey, where do I want to go in my career? Maybe you'll start out as a generalist, but maybe eventually you want to be a specialist and that is a typical route that many people in cybersecurity take to then be able to pave their way and figure out exactly where they want to be. The next thing is to learn scripting skills. So I know not every job in cybersecurity is going to require coding and I don't expect every job in cybersecurity to require it, but I do think it will always be at your benefit to be able to learn how to code. And that's not to say that you have to be a software engineer. That doesn't mean you have to be a full stack developer, especially if you're working in cybersecurity. Just learning the foundations of coding for scripting is going to be really helpful in helping you help yourself in your career. Regardless of where you work in tech, coding is going to be one of the most sought after most useful skills to you because even if you're not coding on a regular basis in cybersecurity, there may be times when you have to look at someone else's code. You may have to understand what a script is doing. You may have to understand what a function is doing. You may have to look through some JavaScript, some Python, maybe some backend code. And while it typically won't be a requirement for the job for you to have coding skills, it's just in general really helpful if you're able to look at someone's code, look at someone's script, understand what it does because that makes you a more technical cybersecurity professional and and I think in general across the board, that'll help propel you in your career if you do want to go into a more technical area like malware analysis or being a cybersecurity engineer. The two languages I typically recommend for, for someone who is trying to get into cybersecurity and they're also interested in learning how to script or learning how to code are Python and JavaScript. So JavaScript obviously is going to be one of the very popular languages for cybersecurity professionals. As many websites, their front end is written in JavaScript or some kind of JavaScript library or framework. And then of course for Python, it's a very lightweight language that is often used for scripting, but it also has different frameworks and it can also be used for backend. So it is overall a very versatile language. It may not be the best, it may not be the most high performing language, but it is one of the easiest ones to pick up as a beginner. Of course, if you're feeling saucy, you can learn a language like Go or Java. And Java is obviously another very popular language, but Go is definitely one of the more niche ones. If you're going into reverse engineering or malware analysis, Go may be a very interesting one to learn considering more and more malware is being written in Go and there aren't enough cybersecurity researchers and reverse engineering experts that have knowledge in that area. So it could definitely put you a cut above the rest if you're able to know some more niche languages. But of course, I would start out with JavaScript or Python just because they are typically the most used and also will be easier to pick up and learn. And I'm not saying to become a professional, I'm not saying to be advanced in Python or JavaScript, but it will be nice to at least have some beginner to intermediate coding skills or scripting skills when you are getting into that first job in cybersecurity. 
And trust me, you'll be a huge benefit to your team if you know how to script, if you know how to automate something really quickly, it really will pay off in the long run. All right, next thing is to get comfortable using the command line. So when I was a student in college, I definitely tried to steer away from the command line because, because firstly, it just wasn't really familiar to me. And the only thing I really used it for was for different git commands, git add, git commit, git push. So very basic things. And I really didn't use it very much until I started in the workforce. And by that point, I was already like, wow, maybe I should have paid attention more to the the different commands that I was learning in school that I really didn't get that much hands-on practice with and I really do think it's one of the best areas to learn because because if you're working in tech specifically working in cybersecurity you're always going to be using the main operating systems out there Linux Unix Windows just getting at least proficient in using the command line tools or just using command line in general on those operating systems is going to be very helpful for you regardless of where you go into in cybersecurity it's again one of those universal skills that for example I'm not a sys admin admin per se, but it is helpful for me to know different Linux commands because I might use them for a capture the flag, I might use them to do a quick network scan, I might try to get information on an IP address. So all of these are just really helpful general skills to know as a cybersecurity professional, even if you're not using it on a regular basis, just having, just knowing maybe the top 30 or top 50 general command line tools or commands is going to be really helpful so that you're able to make your life easier by knowing that these tools exist. And I'm definitely not against Googling, of course you can Google any tool that you may need but just knowing in the back of your mind that that tool exists that's something that is really helpful because it just helps you get your work done faster and you're also able to just be a lot more in control using the command line compared to just using a web browser and of course and of course if you're going into the red team a lot of the different tools used for offensive security and exploits are going to live on the command line tools like nmap metasploit you're typically going to be interacting with those tools directly on the command line or the terminal and i do think it's one of the most foundational skills to know and i'm not saying i'm a command line expert i'm definitely nowhere near expert level especially compared to some of my other co-workers and other mentors that i've had but if you're at least able to wrap your head around it and use basic tools and basic commands to be able to get you through the different things that may come up in your job and then of course learning new skills and tools along the way that's going to be one of the most valuable skills that you can learn as a cybersecurity professional and the last thing on this list is to get a certification so i do have a video on the most popular beginner cybersecurity certifications out there and I can link that in the description below if you guys want to check that out but certifications really do take you a long way in your career and it just proves to employers or interviewers or potential jobs that you're applying to that you're someone who cares about continuous learning you're someone who is capable and interested in the field as well as to get any educational requirements that are needed for a specific role cybersecurity is probably the biggest field in tech that requires the most certifications and when you do get a certification it really does kind of set you a foot above the rest because you're willing to put in the work and effort to study for a certification learn the materials and pass that certification with the knowledge that you've gained and many jobs in cybersecurity do have a preferred or required qualification for different cybersecurity certifications out there so i would really look at different job requirements or job descriptions of the specific jobs that you want to go into and the most common certifications that those companies or those job listings are asking for and then with that take those and decide which certification is best for you and best for the career that you want to build for yourself to then be able to go on and get those credentials or certifications to help boost you in your career and get to the specific roles that you want to get into and of course i don't expect a certification to be a study for one night and pass the test that is typically not how it happens but it really is about continuous learning and continuous improvement for yourself as well as for your cybersecurity career all right so that's it for this video let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below if you guys want to check out the simply learn postgraduate program in cybersecurity definitely check them out in the description below as this is an awesome program with amazing reviews and benefits especially if you're someone who is who is just starting out in cybersecurity or maybe you're trying to get into cybersecurity from a different field next cohort is starting soon so don't miss out thank you all so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye